Hi, and welcome to Data and Storage ASEAN. We are really pleased to have the opportunity to speak with IBM's Accor Camat today. The storage industry has one constant, and that's the fact that data volumes have always and will always continue to grow. Of course, when data volumes grow, new storage is needed to accommodate it. But outside of that constant, the storage industry is going through huge disruption with cloud, cyber resilience, the app economy, and demands of transformation all affecting how organizations want to manage and deploy their storage solutions. That's why I'm so pleased to have Accor with us today to discuss how we navigate these changes and understand what IBM is doing to keep pace with demands on storage strategy. So with that, before we jump into the first question, Akil, would you just like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? So thank you, Andrew, for having me here. And it's a pleasure again to uh, be here and talk to you. Uh, my name is Akhil. Uh, I'm responsible for the uh, APAC, across APAC for the flash storage business. And uh, thank you for having me here again. Always a pleasure to have you with us, Akil. Let's jump into the uh, questions. And the first questions I've got to you is really about flash storage in general. Um, how is it that flash storage is helping enterprises right now? And when they make an investment in flash storage, uh, does it help them in terms of their future uh, as well? Yeah, that's a good question, right? And to echo the words of our chairman, Mr. Arvind Krishna, IBM today operates some of the most mission critical environments for our clients, be it electrical grids, banks, mobile networks, manufacturing organizations, etc. And this is what we call which run the modern economy today. Our aim is to make their systems work faster, more productive, and in an efficient manner. Secondly, if you look at most of the business value today for any enterprise resides in its data. And what we find there is going through a journey, what we call as data from data modernization to data monetization. Right? And this is underpinned by two most fundamental and transformational technologies of our time, which is hybrid cloud and AI. We have aligned our complete portfolio on these two key pillars of transformation technology. To get back to your point on some of the key challenges, here are some data points. An average enterprise today operates anywhere between 22 applications to 400 plus applications. These applications, again, reside across multiple data locations, an average enterprise, again, works at least on five different clouds, has a lot of remote users, and what we say operates a lot of mixed workloads. So some of the challenges from a data perspective these organizations face are around an infrastructure, inflexible infrastructure, around data mobility, data gravity, data residency, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, TCO. Right? That, in a nutshell, I think, is what we are there to solve these problems for our clients. Yeah, really interesting, Akil. I noticed you mentioned the concept of data gravity, which I think uh, is a really important thing for people to really understand as they shape their modern storage technology. Um, let me delve into specifically your product set and the IBM Flash System 5000. Um, what is it that's unique about that particular offering in the market today? Yeah, thank you, Andrew. And I think uh, that's, that's a wonderful uh, question out there, right? So firstly, I think what I'd like to share with you is IBM has been on the Gartner Magic Leaders Quadrant for the past 14 years. The second data point out here is out of the two quadrants which Gartner has for storage, IBM is only one of the two vendors present in both these uh, magic quadrants, right? And I think that is a witness uh, to our ability and our vision around storage. So what are some of the challenges, given all the challenges which I spoke of earlier, which our clients face, Typically, many vendors like us and try to put in point solution for point products, and, and that created a complexity of portfolio for customers. So about two years back, we went through what we call as a radical simplification of your portfolio. We simplified the portfolio to a large extent. So be it a client operating on a bare metal workload or a virtualized workload or a containerized workload, we had one single data plane what we call a spectrum virtualize uh, as the single data plane. You could be operating on-prem, you could be operating off-prem. Thus, this data plane was the one, the engine which, which, which ran in the front. This can also, as spectrum virtualize, virtualize up to 5,000 heterogeneous types, 500 heterogeneous storages. 
So fundamentally, what we have at the front is this data layer plane, which is available in most of our flash metrics. The second thing was around performance. Right? How, how do we add more performance and latency to this? So if you look at any of our products, uh, be it the flash 5000 to the 9000, we are in a position to offer up to 18 million IOPS, one of the highest in the industry. A latency response of 70 microseconds, again, one of the fastest. And all of this, we are able to package in a small form factor. For example, the FS5200, what we have, is, is a size of one small pizza box. So this is what we package in terms of performance. Secondly, I think with the pandemic around here, most of our clients uh, had data resiliency and business continuity as, as one of their uh, key initiatives. And to that, what we have is something what we call as hyper swag. Now, this offers you 100% data availability for your infrastructure. And the best part is we guarantee that 100% data availability. Now, you can kind of scale this infrastructure by putting in multiple clusters. And lastly, what I would like to add is to cater to the hybrid cloud environment, our flash storage and spectrum Pro virtualize works well with some of the public cloud providers where you can move data seamlessly from on-prem to off-prem. It is supported on IBM Cloud. It is supported on AWS. And off late, as of October, we have GA it on uh, Microsoft Azure as well. So I think these are three or four things which, which kind of sets uh, our technology motion and our portfolio ahead uh, in terms of what we can offer our clients. Yeah, thanks again, Akul. I think that the point you made about integrating with public clouds is really, really important. I think every storage, uh, serious storage player uh, has to be able to give their clients that flexibility of moving data and management across their on-prem and public cloud infrastructure. And it seems that you've really got that nailed. Um, let me move the conversation on a little bit. Um, flash used to be ex uh, kind of synonymous with the idea of expensive. There wasn't cheap flash. Um, but increasingly, flashes are really about actually delivering economies, but people don't always understand why. Um, so particularly in light of your you know, flash system 5000, can you explain how in making investment in that is actually delivering savings and cost benefits over time? Yeah, so that's a great question. And in fact, we are very confident of, of the pricing we are, we are offering in the market today. Uh, in fact, if you go to Google and search for IBM Storage Smarts, you will land up on our storage digital platform, uh, which shares with you uh, an online catalog of pricing information, references, uh, use cases. And you will find that we are offering prices as low as two cents per GB per month. Right? This is for flash high performance storage. So on cost alone, I think there are three different aspects we've got to look at. One is the cost of procurement itself. Two is the cost of deployment. And three is the cost of maintaining. So for cost of deployment, what we have done is we have come out with solution blueprints, which help you deploy any solution quite, in, quite speedily and in a fast manner, thus saving costs for deployment. In terms of cost of maintaining the equipment, we have something what we call as storage smart expert care program. Now this particular program offers you, uh, a, uh, offers you cost, which you know throughout the lifetime of your equipment, as a percentage of the product. And this is supported by something what we call as storage insights. This is our AI operated software running on each of our storages, which has the ability to self heal, to understand your storage patterns, and also uh, deploy, in case of failure, equipments at your data center before they fail, right? Thus significantly reducing the cost of maintenance. And lastly, we have something what we call as the utility program, which is consume, pay as you consume. So what we do out here is three years of data center capacity is provided in your data center on day one, and you pay as you just consume. So looking and putting all this together, I think our clients have a, a, a very good pricing strategy, which we have put forward, uh, and various other options to reduce their total TCO. Yeah, that's very interesting, Akil. And I, you know, I noticed you, you mentioned that figure of uh, two cents per GB per month. And not only is that probably surprising in terms of the cost of flash, but I think it's really interesting that you talk about the cost as a monthly, almost operational cost, which is something that I think we're seeing more companies understand is important when they think about storage, whether it's on-prem or not. Mm -hmm.